In this Warframe guide, we're gonna look at everything you need to know about the different elements in the game so that at the end of the video, you know exactly which damage and which status types you pick against which enemy faction and why. If you've ever played a video game, which is highly likely to be honest, you probably know that many games feature some sort of elemental damage. Mostly, that boils down to physical damage and then like four elements or so on top. Warframe, however... Uh... Three different physical damage types, impact, puncture, slash, four basic elements, heat, cold, toxin, electricity, then six combined elements, corrosive, radiation, gas, blast, magnetic, and viral, and as if that's not enough, there are still two more that were completely different from everything else, which would be Tau and Void. So, in case you haven't resigned yet, uh, firstly, cheers to you, and secondly, let's bring some order into this mess and explain it as understandable and easy to grasp as possible. First of all, we need to make one important thing very clear. Elemental damage does not equal status chance. They are completely different things. If a weapon deals elemental damage, no matter which kind, it always deals that elemental damage whenever it hits, not just when it applies a status effect. Status effects, in turn, are specific effects that an element triggers if it inflicts a status. If you deal a status effect, you can see that by the little elemental symbol next to the damage number. So, for example, if we assume we have a weapon that deals 100 heat damage and has a 50% status chance, then that weapon will always deal 100 heat damage with every hit and in addition has a 50% chance for every hit to start burning the enemy, which is the status effect of heat. We're gonna take a look at the different elements and status effects here in a second. Just very briefly, why is all of that even important? Why would you even care about elements and status and all that stuff? The reason is, every element has both a specific damage bonus against some types of enemies and a certain penalty against others. And we're not talking about measly 5-ish percent here. With the right element in the right situation, you can increase your damage output by up to 75%. Add to that some useful status effects that, for example, weaken your enemy, and you can easily even triple these figures. So, long story short, if you want to have the big numbers, you gotta have the right elements. So, while you're down there giving the video a like, uh, by the way, thank you so much for that, let's finally take a look at all these damage types, shall we? First, I'll go over all the elements and their corresponding status effects and what they do, and afterwards we're gonna talk about when exactly one use which of these elements against which enemy faction so you always know how to mod your equipment. Let's start with the three physical ones, Impact, Puncture and Slash. These are the most common types and basically every weapon comes pre-equipped with some variation of them. Impact gets a little damage bonus against enemy shields while being not so strong against normal red health. Puncture in contrast is weak against shields but therefore has a slight advantage over armor, whereas Slash is decent against unprotected health but suffers a little damage penalty versus armor. Impact and Puncture are both very unimportant damage types. Their small damage bonuses really don't make much of a difference, and uh, all in all, you simply never want to use them, alright? Yes, the status effect of Puncture reduces enemies' damage output a bit, but in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't have a huge benefit, and Impact is quite literally the most hated element in the entire game because of the fact that its status effect staggers enemies, making it insanely difficult to land precise headshots. In contrast, however, Slash is one of the best damage types in the entire game and insanely powerful. While its damage bonus isn't anything to write home about, its status effect most certainly is. On a slash proc, the enemy is inflicted with 6 seconds of bleed damage over time. However, that damage ignores all kinds of armor and resistances, making it extremely powerful in high-level play where enemy damage reduction otherwise gets close to 100%. Oh, and by the way, no, I'm not gonna recite this entire damage table right now. I'll put a link to it in the video description if you want to know every single percentile figure of every element against every type of enemy health, but for the sake of simplicity, in this video, I'm gonna leave out all the fluff and break down just the actually important info. But let's go over the actual elemental damage types now, starting out with the four basic elements. Heat, Cold, Toxin and Electricity. 
Cold gets a damage bonus against standard Corpus shields and a little one against Corpus armor while being weak against Infested. Its status effect slows down enemies, which is not bad, especially when being surrounded by hordes of infested... Uh, against which cold is not so strong... You know what? Maybe it's not all that great after all. But <laughs> jokes aside, while cold is usually never used for the damage itself, its slow effect can come in very handy for crowd control in high-level content. I mean, hey, I even mentioned it as a viable tactic in my Warframe Ultimate Survival Guide. Toxin is really straightforward. It gets a damage bonus against red corpus health and quite some penalties against most other stuff. Its status effect, similar to Slash, deals damage over a 6 second time period. However, what makes Toxin unique is that it completely ignores all kinds of shields. And yes, all Toxin damage ignores all shields, not just the status effect, making it a very solid choice against corpus. Electricity deals bonus damage against Corpus robots while being weak against Corpus armor, with a status effect that deals damage over time as well while stunning affected enemies for a short period of time. All in all, not terrible, but not great either. Heat, on the other hand, is a very strong element. With its bonus damage against all types of flesh, it naturally performs nice against infested, but what makes it really great is its status effect. Like Toxin and Electricity, it also deals damage over 6 seconds, however, in addition, as long as the enemy is burning, their armor is reduced to half. You can't reduce it any further with additional heat procs, but having your armor cut in half in just a split second really has the potential to ruin your day if you're a high-level enemy. However, the basic four elements are not all. If you apply two of them to the same weapon, they combine into one of six combined elements. Left click and subscribe button combine into always keeping up to date with everything Warframe. Very strong in the early game, as well as in later play. My absolute favorite element right there. Welcome to the crew. But jokes aside, let's take a look at those six combined elements right now. Blast is the combination of heat and cold. On a status effect, it makes enemies check out the pavement a bit more closely, rendering them less accurate for some time. Uh, but seriously, I don't really want to go into any damage bonuses and specifics right here, because just like Impact, Blast is just absolutely seriously bad and you don't want to use it. Next, Corrosive. Yes! Corrosive is the product of Toxin and Electricity, and it is amazing, coming in at a whopping 75% damage bonus against Grenier armor as well as Armored Infested, and only a penalty against very specific Corpus shields. Yes, that's very solid already, and as a status effect, it also reduces armor. In contrast to Heat, however, Corrosive reduces a bit of armor per proc, which gives you the ability to remove way more than Heat's total of 50%, given you deal enough Corrosive procs, of course. Corrosive is very nice, but let's postpone our final verdict on it until we come to the enemy faction summary. Coming up with Magnetic... Um, so Gas is Heat plus Toxin and very good against Infested. Don't use it against anything else, though, because it won't work properly. On a status effect, it spawns a gas cloud dealing even more gas AoE damage. Nice. Radiation is heat plus electricity, very good against corpus armor, but due to the fact that outside the index there's no single place where you're gonna face a lot of armored corpus, it's not really worth using for its damage. However, its status effect, which confuses enemies and makes them attack each other, can be of very great use for crowd controlling purposes. And finally, we come to the one best element in the entire game. Viral. In and of itself, it doesn't look that special with some very negligible damage bonuses and penalties, but it's the status effect that catapults it into the stratosphere. On its first proc, Viral doubles the enemy's damage taken to their health, instantly giving you twice the damage output against said enemies. But wait, there's more because you can not only stack one, but up to 10 viral effects on your foes, with each consecutive one increasing damage taken by another 25%, which results in you dealing additional 325% damage to the enemy if 10 viral effects are applied. Yes, that quadruples your damage output, and I don't know about you, but where I come from, we call that pretty darn good. 
In the beginning of the video, I also mentioned Void and Tau as damage types, but I'm not gonna talk about them right here, because Tau can't even be dealt by the player themselves, and is reserved only for certain enemies later in the game, and Void, uh, well, first it would be a spoiler to talk about it, and second, there's no real need to care about it anyway, given how specific it is once you unlock it. But before we go on to when to use which element, what's your personal favorite damage type? Let us know in the comments down below. On to the practical question most of you have probably been asking. When do I use which element and against which enemies? Well, let's take a look at that right now, starting with our favorite Dumbo space zombies, the Grenier. The Grenier are pretty straightforward. Almost all the units are solely equipped with ferrite armor, which, as we already seen, is very weak against corrosive damage. Consequently, that's what you want to use. However, contrary to what you might think, in higher levels where enemy armor and therefore damage reduction is to be found somewhere in the stratosphere of Jupiter, you actually don't want to use the corrosive status effect to reduce said armor. Why, you ask? Well, first, depending on the enemy level, it is quite possible that even with the maximum of 10 corrosive procs, enemy armor is still gonna be too high for you to inflict any meaningful damage, and secondly, even dealing that many corrosive effects requires you to invest quite a bit of mod space into bumping up your status chance. Mod space that could, in turn, be used for something else. So the solution then is… don't use it at all against very high level Grenier. If you're playing in high level, the armor reduction will be done by your Warframe's abilities. After all, you can just infuse Necro's Terrify onto any frame via Helminth and strip away the entire armor of the whole room. And in addition, without enemy armor, you won't even get the 75% damage bonus because that's only against armor. So the rule of thumb here is, as long as you can still overwhelm enemy armor, use as much corrosive as you can for the bonus. And afterwards, use something that is good against unarmored Grenier, like Slash or Heat. In general, Slash and Heat are absolutely excellent against high-level Grenier, because with their damage over time, they can abuse the game's so-called double-dipping mechanic to deal outright broken amounts of damage. If you want to know more about this double-dipping, by the way, check out my advanced damage guide up there in the corner. But for now, let's continue with the Corpus. The Corpus are an interesting folk, because they're so varied in their health types. You have the unarmored crewman with just a shield and normal health under it. You have the Moas with shields and robotic health. You have Moas with shields and alloy armor. And then you have the bigger bros with proto-shields and armor, a proto-shields working different than normal shields again. So long story short, there's not one single element that can deal with all of these health types at once. But we're getting close. Given the fact that all Corpus units have shields, Toxin is an absolutely amazing choice because remember, by default, Toxin damage completely bypasses shields and attacks the underlying health directly. Against Human Corpus that's especially amazing because the Toxin gets an additional damage bonus against their red health on top. But even against robotic enemies like Moas, where Toxin deals 25% less damage, you're still better off than for example with Magnetic and its damage bonus against shields. Because remember, Toxin ignores shields. So even if downing the enemy's health bar takes a bit longer, you're still only having to deal with half their total hit points. Of course, that calculation only makes sense if half their hit points are actually comprised of shields. Mostly, however, that is the case, so don't worry. But should you ever encounter a mission with Corpus that only feature a tiny shield and a fat robotic or armored health bar, uh, bring out a big radiation weapon and slap it in their face. If you want to be set up against all odds, I'd bring a toxin primary and a hard-hitting radiation secondary or melee. This way, you're always having the right tools at your disposal for the right types of enemies. Infested, on the other hand, are gladly super simple. Use gas to deal a crap load of damage in normal content, and use heat and double dipping if you intend to go against enemy levels in the thousands, and just in case you face some high-level armored infested, use a Warframe skill to reduce the armor, and then go again with heat or gas. As for Corrupted, that's unfortunately difficult, because as you surely know, Corrupted are a wild mixture of all the enemy factions combined, so I'd say find out which faction of them gives you the hardest time, and then bring the right element for them. But wait, there is one last very important thing. 
While all the damage bonuses that we talked about in the entirety of this video are nice and dandy, especially in high level content, you always want to bring a secondary weapon with high status chance equipped with viral damage. As we previously saw, viral is crazy in its status effect, making enemies take tons more damage, so especially against strong foes, it's an absolute must. However, it's important that you use a different weapon from your main one to spread it, since its damage doesn't really get any meaningful bonuses. You're really just using it for the effect. But there's of course a lot more to optimizing your damage than just picking some elements. So if you want to know all the endgame secrets of those crazy millions of damage, then absolutely check out my advanced damage guide right here. That's been all from me for today, we see each other, hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.